Knife attacks can be very scary, but if you have the toolkit and the skills to survive, you sure can. Thanks for joining us on today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Germany. After thorough testing, I recently changed my everyday OC spray to Palm Personal Defense Spray. It's nasty stuff and I recommend it highly. News stories in the description. This is a woman right here who has been kicked out of a Krav Maga school not long ago. She's actually stabbed a person at a convenience store not far away. Then came over to find the owner of the Krav Maga school that kicked her out. Well, he's not there and this guy's saying he's not here, man. But that guy is a student at his school. It's the business that the, the, the Krav Maga school owner got, has as well. And she's not taking it. So she goes after him with the knife, slashes him in the face there and hits him in the gut as well. But he's not having it. It's going to get her from behind, get a seatbelt on her there. And now he has got that knife behind her back and has her under control. You can see him wipe that, you know, uh, away as well as she got him there. Now he's going to have a bit of a hard time here. He picks her up to move her. And now she's going to have a hard time finding a place to get down. But they did end up getting her back on the ground. And if you go read the news story linked in the description, uh, she's facing a host of charges. And the police were able to be called and did pick her up. Scary stuff. If you appreciate the lessons you get here at Active Self Protection, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss a lesson. Let's talk about lessons learned today. So lessons we want to think about here, number one, hours of darkness. Now, because it's winter when this one was made, it's kind of late for hours of darkness, but this is when bad things happen, man. Bad people like hours of darkness because they can't be seen doing what they're doing. When it's dark outside, recognize the cockroaches come out. So you got to pay attention to your world a little bit better and understand that bad things can happen. Now, where this guy is, he's in the loading bay of, you know, not a retail business or anything like that. This is not a classic transitional space in any capacity whatsoever. But notice here that anybody coming and walking up gives this guy kind of the fits. He kind of goes, wait, what's going on here? So he goes from Colonel Cooper's color yellow to color orange color code orange to investigate. So yes, this isn't a place you would normally expect an attack, but this isn't a normal attack either, right? So you see somebody walking in a place you expect people to drive up and you go, hey, what's going on? Are you okay or whatever? He investigated. That was very, very good. Now, this woman, again, she's angry at this owner. She wants to see him. And this guy's talking to her. Hey, you can't stay here, man. You can't wait for him. He's not going to be here for a while. You got to go. And then he is kind of, you know, putting his thing out there. You see, he's got that piece of paper in his hand as a barrier. Now, I will say this, verbal judo, incredibly important. I want every self-defender to read the book Verbal Judo, to read the book How to Win Friends and Influence People, to understand that leaps method of communication, that listen, empathize, ask questions, paraphrase, and save face and suggest options. So then that way people can, you know, talk your way out of these with bad people and with, you know, unstable people if possible. But some people will not be de-escalated and that being the case, you better be ready to go. Now you notice here, he kind of sticks this uh, piece of paper into her chest as a barrier, but notice what that does. Rather than maintain his physical distance and maintain his reactionary gap, that kind of puts his face closer to her and it puts him off balance because he is standing with his feet together. So you got to think as a self-defender all the time. And as she keeps encroaching, you got to set boundaries and then do the ask, tell, make thing that you say, hey man, would you do me a favor? Stay right there. I told you stay right there and then get her away from you if you have to. But because his face was close, you notice here what's going to happen is that she steps in, slashes him in the guts and then slashes him across the face because he didn't have his reactionary gap. And as a self-defender, you're always operating as an, at an initiative deficit and the, the uh, bad actor is always going to get the first move. So you need to be aware of that and maintain your reactionary gap. Now that said, emotional fitness, huge deal here. You gotta say, she just slashed me in the face with a knife. I don't care, I'm still in a fight and I'm gonna go. And he does, and we're gonna see the five Ds plus one come after it big time here. So you're gonna see that what passed him. So he's gonna get in there, close the distance, deflect and get a hold of that hand. So when we talk about the five Ds plus one, the plus one is distance. Whoever controls the distance controls the damage. Then once you've controlled the distance, it's deflect, dominate, distract, disarm, disable. We're not talking about a martial arts dogma here, friends. We are talking about what we see happen in real life disarms day after day, time after time here in real life. If you're going to do this, these are the principles that you have to work with. No matter which system you are, this particular guy here studies Krav Maga, and that's great. But recognize that the principles are what matter no matter which system you study. Now notice here, he does dominate for a moment, but then they split up again. So if you don't get that deflect and it doesn't lead to a dominance, dominance of the tool, the hand with the tool, the arm with the tool, then you might have to back up. And he does here, notice they break distance. Now he has to go back to the beginning 
and get after it again. As Vicini said, we go back to the beginning. So we go control the distance. Notice he's going to do that here. Control the distance and he's going to deflect here himself. Drive in and now he has dominance over the entire person. Now the when we talk about dominance, we talk about dominance of the, the knife, dominance of the hand with the knife, the arm with the knife, and the person. Now, dominance of the person is very, very good because you're dominating all of them. That said, you cannot leave that hand with the tool in it off in space because they can still use that hand with the tool. So it's a dangerous part of dominance. Then that's when we got to distract and then we can disarm and then we can disable, right? Got to get a hold of it to disarm. He does a good thing here though in securing it. Notice here he gets kind of a modified seatbelt. So this isn't what we'd call a classic seatbelt. He hasn't got a hold of her bicep tie, but he's from behind got a hold of her wrist from the backside, which is going to allow him to get a figure four lock and, and get that arm locked up short, which is very, very good because now he's got the dominance and the distractedness because it's gonna hurt her shoulder, so then he can get her down to the ground. Now notice here he's got that arm lock and that short arm lock. My suggestion at this point is to stuff her face into the ground and hold her right there and scream bloody murder until somebody comes to help you. Or at the very least, get her to let that knife go where you can from there while you're still controlling the arm. Get that knife the heck out of the encounter and then you can work on the rest of things from there. Because now you have her distracted with incredible pain. So we've got deflect, dominate, distract. We have not got a disarm yet, and I don't know how long it's gonna take him to get it because he decides to get her up. Now, the one thing I am gonna say that's dangerous here is you notice she's still got the other hand available. So if she's still got something else on her and he hasn't frisked her yet, she can still be a threat. She's slashed him with a knife for gracious sakes. But thankfully, he is going to be able to get her down here. She almost gets out of it, but he, but she doesn't. And he's going to finally be able to get her down at some point here and hold her there. Final thing that I would say, friend, learn how, if you've got that kind of a short arm lock, to get them down on their belly and then, and then control them using your legs. So then that way you can get to your first aid kit. And I can't tell you enough to keep your first aid kit on you. This guy slashed in the face and in the guts. He needs his individual first aid kit so that he can do some triage on himself. And you should be carrying that as well. Those empty-handed skills incredibly important. Of course, in Germany, people can't carry firearms for self-defense as a general rule, but that doesn't mean that you're defenseless because you're the weapon and everything else is just tools. So let's work on that disarm. Go get to your martial arts as soon as all this craziness and this pandemic is over. So then that way you can work on those disarm skills as you seek to cover your ASP.